Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here. Yes, yesterday I saw Aquaman for the second time and I loved it even more. This is a review from a fan. I believe the reviews from fans are more important than these cold-hearted warriors who are just ticking a box when they do a review at IGN, Grace Randolph. It's just another review to these people. But to us it matters. You're probably watching this because you're a fan. Or maybe you want to decide if you want to go and see this film. I will be honest and genuine. I don't have an agenda. I don't have a loyalty to studios. But I am a DC fan. And I'm going to tell you the truth about what I saw. Jason Momoa was cast in this role. Not because he's Sir Lawrence Olivier or Marlon Brando. But because he's Jason Momoa. He's the kind of gentleman that you would love to be friends with. He's the kind of gentleman that you want to sit in a bar with and drink some beer with, just like he is in the film with his father. When he's downing that beer, it's absolutely hilarious. What's he say to his dad? I can swim underwater, but you always outdrink me. Brilliant. Um, so the opening to this film is um, basically this love story between uh, Queen Atlanta and, and um, Aquaman's father. And I forgot his name. Sorry about that. Um, and it's actually very different tax because you're not actually talking about the hero himself. In fact, the hero himself, Arthur Curry, is narrating at the beginning about this love story. And it really is a beautiful thing. And let me tell you one thing. Nicole Kidman in these opening scenes between Queen Atlanta and it is Queen Atlanta, isn't it? If I've got it wrong, I apologise. But her performance, you know, you know, displaying this relationship is a beautiful thing uh, when she eats the fish. I forgot how well Nicole Kidman can do comedy. And then he just turns around and says, well, please don't eat the dog. <laughs> so yeah, really good. So I think Nicole was very important and it was great to cast her because not only is she very famous and very likable, but she, I mean, she is a powerhouse in this role. And I must admit, if I jump to the ending, when she reveals herself to Orm and she's kneeling to him, or not kneeling to him, but cuddling him and crouching down, I think, oh my God, he's going to stab her. He's going to kill her. Please, please, please. Thankfully, he didn't. I think two things were very important in this film to make this a film for the mainstream audience, not just for comic book fans, DC fans, is for Aquaman not to kill Orm um, and for Orm not to kill his mother. Very important. We know what happened when Superman killed Zod. Now, for me, it wasn't a, a, this major problem, even though Superman breaking someone's neck is, is a pretty big deal. Um, now, I, I don't want to get into that again. So I think if you want critics to like a film or you want the mainstream audience who are not that invested in superheroes, you can't do things like that. And I'll tell you why it was important that Orm didn't die, because the relationship between Arthur and Orm in the comics, and even when you see a couple of episodes of Batman, the Brave and the Bold, and you see that, you see the relationship, because Arthur really wants to have a relationship with his brother. And even from Orm in this film, let me just tell you, Patrick Wilson is outstanding. His mere presence displays a fantastic villain that we don't normally see in superhero films, unless we're talking about Man of Steel with Zod, because Shannon, as far as I'm concerned, is the best. Obviously, Ledger's Joker. But you know what I mean, don't you? So Wilson is amazing. But what I like, there's a great moment, actually, in this film um, where he thinks that actually Arthur and Mira, uh, kind of fish shippers, um, Arthur calls it, kind of dissolves, burns, whatever. And you can see the sadness in his eyes that they've actually died. Now, it's interesting when we go, he, he kind of secretly goes to Manta and tells him to kill um, Princess Mira and to uh, kill um, Arthur. So that was that was an interesting moment. Um, I don't know if he actually really believes that, um, that Manta is capable of doing that. Um, now, let's talk about Black Manta. Um, brilliant. I, I don't know the actor's name, but brilliant. I love the whole thing that Aquaman is responsible for um, Manta's father's death. And that's something that's going to be with Arthur for the rest of his life. It's what creates this kind of enemy versus enemy thing. 
between Manta and Aquaman. And Manta knows about Aquaman, even when they're facing off in that beautiful opening sequence in the submarine. And it really is a beautiful sequence. So after we get the whole love story between Atlanta and Arthur's father, we're on the submarine. And it's a brilliant moment. You see the brutality of these pirates. So when it comes to the moment where Manta's begging Aquaman, please save my father, he goes, you just butchered all these innocent people. No. If you survive, great. If you don't, great. I think um, because Arthur is offended by what they've done. Um, now, it's, it's a big moment, and I suppose some people may question that Arthur allows, doesn't save them, but I think he is kind of an emotional hero. He's not, he, he, he's not measured. You know, this version of Arthur Curry isn't measured. If you, if you hurt people, that wounds him. I love the fact he can talk in different languages. That's brilliant. Um, William Defoe as Voco, really brilliant. Re a really seamless um, kind of performance. And I love the way he's advising um, Orm at the same time as helping Mira and Arthur. So that was really good as well. This re really, Lucasfilm should take this film and study it. Because when you see the duel between Orm and Arthur, it is brilliant. And when they're facing off in that, I think, bloody hell, this is the lightsaber fight we haven't had in Disney Star Wars. The way James Wan choreographs it, but visually, it looks beautiful and brutal. And it really is a great fight. And I was surprised we saw that fight so early on. Um, interesting, but then they go on the outer adventure um, to, to find what they're going to find. Um, the fork thing, I forgot what it was called, but you, you know what I mean. Um, and so it really is a great fight. Atlantis is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, it's, I haven't seen anything so stunning since Man of Steel. Now, um, Avengers Infinity War, effects-wise, is a groundbreaking film. But I think in terms of CBMs, visually, this is the best thing I've ever seen. This is the best thing I've ever seen since Avatar Lord, Lord of the Rings, because Lord of the Rings and Avatar, um, effects-wise, are still probably, even to this day, still the best things in film. But this, this blows all of that out of the water. How Juan did it, I don't know, but he has made a beautiful-looking movie. But you get the emotional touches. Um, I, I love when um, when people say um, Jason Momoa can't act, when he looks at Ullman and says... When I was younger, I really wanted to meet my baby brother and get to know him. Until I knew, until I, and, then, and then he's really emotional and he goes, until I realised he was a dick, which I, brilliant. And this is why my mother's there for. It's that re relatability. Um, and and this, as I say, he's not being cast because he's one of the best actors out there. He's being cast because he is Jason Momoa. So one, a YouTube channel called Emergency Awesome said, oh, um, he's just being Jason Momoa. Well, yes, that's what he's been cast for. He's been cast to be Jason Momoa because Jason Momoa is a brilliant stand-up guy who we love and we follow to the ends of the earth. And that's who and what Aquaman should be. So don't see that as a negative. See, yes, Jason Momoa is here because he's Jason Momoa. There's nothing wrong with that. Amber Heard's performance, she does a lot of heavy lifting in this film. I was so surprised how good she was. Sorry, Amber. I didn't realise. Such a beautiful woman. And sometimes you automatically think beautiful people can't act. Hey, Patrick Wilson is a beautiful man, but he's one of the best actors we have in the industry. It's so good on so many levels. And let me tell you something. I'm not a fan of romance in films or TV shows, but at that moment when they kiss, I've literally got tears running down their eyes. So for people saying there's no chemistry there, there is. They've obviously worked hard for it. It probably isn't a natural chemistry, but I thought their scenes together were beautiful. They were, I mean, the banter was brilliant. I thought it really worked. Um, when they're traveling around, when they're going to, when they're in the desert, a beautiful moment with that kid as well. Um, there's so many great moments in this film. It really is. You, I mean, let me just say about, is it Rupert Gregson Williams music? Brilliant. And it's interesting. He kind of put little bits it kind of recognisable at times to his Wonder Woman thing. And I think this is purposely done because it links the franchise together. And yes, 
when um, he's reunited um, with Mira again, she mentions that he's he he's just saved Atlantis and Earth from Steppenwolf. And uh, so Steppenwolf got a mention. The other characters didn't get a mention, but Steppenwolf did. So there's a link there. I think what they didn't want to do is go on about Justice League too much, obviously, because of its div divisive nature. But they want to make it clear that this is the same universe. It's amazing, really, um, what a difference a year makes, as I said a billion times before. This film's pre-sales are so amazing, so massive. And to think, to think this is coming off its last film of being so divisive. So it's amazing. But it truly is. A f this is what a blockbuster should be. And it's very interesting if we look at um, Arthur's journey from being Arthur to Aquaman. Um, he starts off very resistant. There's a line he says, I'm a nobody, I'm nothing. He doesn't believe. He doesn't. Nobody believes in him. But he doesn't believe in himself. He doesn't believe he's good enough to be king. But ultimately, the, the message of this movie is, maybe not, but you're better than that. A hero, you know, upscales a king, if you like. You know, a king will, will order people and have, you know, in, enforce his or her or his ideology. Be a queen, wouldn't it, if it was a her? But yeah, so this is a hero. So he's going he's gonna to run Atlantis a very different way. And in the end, when Orm is arrested, he looks to him and he says, when you're ready, let's talk. Brilliant. This is what you see. You see the, the relationship in the comics between Arthur and Orm is a very complicated one. It's not you're the villain, you're the hero. I hate you. I've got a, I, I've got no feelings for you. They're brothers, which makes this a very special uh, superhero supervillain dynamic. But Orm is more, of course, than just a villain. He's ultimately ultimately going to be Ocean Master now. I don't think we could say he actually became Ocean Master in this film, but there's setups here. Um, going back to Black Manta, I think there's a big potential. Black Manta was so good in this film, he could get his own movie, which would be brilliant. I'd be well up for that. Um, I thought Black Manta was very successful. People were complaining that he's not in it a lot. He's in it enough. He spread out throughout the movie in the right way. And you've got that um, post credit scene when he tells that crazy doctor who's obsessed with Atlantis, take me to Aquaman and I'll tell you how I, what, where I got the suit from and all of that. So that was quite a good, clever post credit scene. So it didn't kind of dive into the outer universe. I don't think they're ready to start linking things up yet. You know, one thing you can tell by this film is that when Walter Hamada came in, he must have made a hell of a lot of changes. You see it, the stunning end, end credits. They are stunning. They're great, by the way. They're very similar to the Wonder Woman, you Wonder Woman like end credits scene, because you don't really get um, a big opening Superman the movie credit sequence at the start. But what you do, you get a stunning one, just like with Wonder Woman in, in the end of the film. So it really, it really, it really is something amazing. It, it, it's just fantastic. I tell you something. Um, this film, if, if you don't like the film and you don't like the story, you can still look at it and say it's beautiful. But this film is brilliant on every level because you do care about the characters. Um, you are intrigued with what's going on. But the, the way you're introduced to Atlantis is something truly, truly special. As a Greek Cypriot, I've always been torn between two cultures, two nationalities. I was born and raised in the UK, but everyone always reminded me of my Greek Cypriot culture. And this beat in Aquaman is absolutely fantastic because at the, the first half of the movie, Arthur's only concern is the human race, the surface world, his father. He doesn't really want to know about Atlantis. He's resistant to it, right? But it's only when he visits Atlantis, he realises that this is part of me as well. And he starts to appreciate that. And it was like with me as a young man, when I used to come out here in Cyprus and come on holidays, I slowly started to embrace my separate culture. So for anyone who's multicultural, for anyone who's kind of pulling in two different directions, Aquaman, um, you know, deals with this commentary and this situation really, really well. And I think Momoa, because I think 
people like Momoa and James Wan, who obviously, I'm assuming James Wan and Jason Momoa were born in the US, but obviously they have ties to other cult another culture as well. So anyone like that has known knows what it's like to be um, torn in two different directions, and this fi and this film does that a lot better than other films do. <clears throat> so what's the strengths of James Wan? Well, James Wan just has it all. He can get performances out of actors, and he can give you a beautiful film. Now this is the first James Wan film I've ever seen. I've never seen anything else he's ever done, but this man is amazing. He really is. He's put together an amazing film. But as I say, I do suspect Walter Hamada came in and wanted changes. Because this is James, uh, This is um, Walter Hamada's first film. He's an executive producer on the film. But Deborah Snyder, Zack Snyder, Jeff Johns are still there. So this was a handover film, if you like. So you won't totally get what Walter's trying to do yet in this film. But when we get to Shazam, that will totally... Be his film. Um, I don't think Zack Snyder is an executive producer on that. I think he still is on Wonder Woman, by the way. So that's interesting. But I do think with Wonder Woman um, that um, Patty Jenkins is totally in charge of that film, and she's co-wrote she co-wrote the story with Jeff Johns as well. So it's going to be very interesting how that works out. But yes, um, still a lot of influence I think in this film from Zack Snyder. But I think when Water came in he would have made relevant changes because once your name goes above the door, you're the one who gets the positive and negative consequences if it goes wrong. So Walter will have come in and that's why he was brought in to sort this franchise out. And he does a really good job. This really, this film really walks the line of um, being kind of an easy to watch, formulaic um, superhero origin film and tries to inject pieces of depth very carefully, very slowly, so no one gets overly confused. The problem with making films for mainstream audiences is you can't be too complex, I'm afraid. It's just the generation we're making films for now. It's just one of those things. But this film has a lot of emotional beats. It's very good. And um, the, I mean, the humour, uh, the humour doesn't always hit, but there's things that are funny in this film. But to be honest with you, humour not hitting doesn't matter. That's not what makes a break makes or breaks a film. I know the MCU think it does, but ultimately it's about the characters, it's about the performances, it's about the writing, it's about the directing, it's about the music, it's about everything put together in a round ball. And this is why this film works. Because when you go there, you will be transported to Atlantis and you really get to know this underwater, you know, universe. And it's beautiful. You see all these creatures. Um, Arthur, unlike anyone else on Atlantis, for some reason, can communicate with these sea creatures. And there's a, there's a great moment when they go inside the fish. And um, Mira's just totally cacking herself. And he's just laying down like he's on a surfboard or something. It's brilliant. Another reason why Momoa is so different to getting somebody else. Um, Jason Momoa is a very unconventional actor. There's no question about that. He's an unconventional person. He even looks unconventional. But this is why he's perfect in a superhero movie, even in Justice League. And I think one of the reasons this film's going to do so well, and I think it's one of the reasons Black Panther did well, is because these characters were already in another film, right? So we already know them. So when it's time for their standalone movie, we're all in. Because I think Aquaman was one of the best things about Justice League. People say, well, we didn't see much of him. Well, it was a Justice League movie. They had to represent all the heroes. And they, that's one of the film's um, positives, actually. Um, the kind of banter and stuff between the characters really, really worked. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, Arthur Curry, a.k.a. Jason Momoa, is a perfect storm, if you like. You care about him. You like him, and, and, and that's exactly what you need from a superhero lead. So he's so, so good. And really, mo a lot of the film is literally him, Mira, and then Orm back in Atlantis. And as I say, Orm is a very interesting villain because he can be quite brutal. He kills people in this film, but he can also be quite merciful like, like he was with William Defoe's character. I've already forgotten his name, even though I mentioned it like 10 minutes ago. But yeah, 
Uh, Voco, yeah. Because he basically turns around to Voco and goes, don't think I don't know what you've been doing all these years. You've been working against me. Don't deny it. So Voco realises if he denies it, he's dead because he's insulting the man's intelligence. So he omits it. And I think at that moment, you think when you see Patrick Wilson's face and his acting, you're not sure if he's going to have him killed or just take him away. And he says, take him away. Make sure he's got a good view. And then Voco turns it around on him when he, when Orm's arrested. And Orm has this smile on his face. So Orm's one of these villains who is brutal, but has got a compassionate side. And I, th I think what I get by the end of this film is that I, it's basically, this is just the first step. You just want to see the next chapter straight away because... You can see there's going to be amazing things between Orm and Aquaman now. Now that Aquaman is actually the king of Atlantis. You know this kind of hate between Aquaman and Black Manta is going to explode in the sequel. And have no doubt there will be a sequel. Personally, I think they should hold off and not do a sequel straight away. And maybe um, get James Wan to, uh, to direct another character for DC. Um, I think that James Wan would be perfect for a Superman film especially if it was a Man of Steel sequel. He's really one of the few directors who can echo the type of directing and visual effects that we get from Zack Snyder. I mean, he, he, I mean, he really, I mean, it's obvious why Zack Snyder brought him on, because probably he's the only director he knows who can equal him in making stunning films. And James Wan has made a stunning film. James Wan has got great quality, but he's also a very, very interesting person. He's a very direct director when talking publicly. If he sees anyone lying about his work on social media, he'll call them out on it. But he's always very polite. He's not aggressive. He's not challenging. And he's not triggering. But he really is an amazing director. And as I say, if I was Lucasfilm, I'd be knocking on his door. But I don't think they're going to nab him from Warner Brothers now. I mean, they'll sign him up very, very quickly. For a, I think, you know, an Aquaman sequel is in the bag because he's done such a good job here. Listen, this film is a 10 out of 10 film. There is no question about that. Um, now, maybe that's the fanboy in me, but I think it's a really, really good film. Now, let's compare it to other standalone CBMs, right? Origin CBMs. So I wouldn't say it's better than Man of Steel. I suppose in places it might kind of go beyond what Man of Steel was. But all in all, I'd say Man of Steel is a great origin film and probably one of my favourites still. Um, is Batman v Superman an origin? I suppose it is for um, Ben Affleck's Batman. Um, I'm not going to put that in there, though. So let's look at... I mean, then you look at Wonder Woman. I'd say it's Man of Steel, Wonder Woman, um, then um, Aquaman, then Captain America, the first Avenger, then Iron Man. Because I would literally say that... Iron Man is a really good origin film, really good. I certainly think Aquaman is as good as that, maybe even better. Maybe that's because I'm a DC fan. But yeah, there's a, I think, in fact, if you look at the MCU origin movies, you've got four. Well, Aquaman is leaps and bounds better than four. Obviously, we need to talk about the marvel that is James Wan yet again. Because when they're in Italy and you can see the Atlantean soldiers chasing Mira, but what the camera does is, something I've never seen before, not for years, it goes away and goes back to where Arthur is, where the belt is. And they keep on moving to and from like that. It's just an, a, some amazing camera work. And I think there wasn't a cut there. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there was a cut there. So... That was really, really amazing. Um, some of the techniques that he's created for this film, and there have been techniques created for this film, makes this film very groundbreaking. And we can all already see from the pre-sale box office, this film is going to be groundbreaking in another way. But how did this happen? We can make a video. I'm planning on doing loads of Aquaman videos today, talking about its success so far, and talking about um, Jason Momoa, talking about Henry Cavill's future um, as Superman. Now, I don't really want to go in on that in a review video, but we will talk about that later as well, because I've got some very interesting insights on that, and maybe a Black Manta standalone movie as well. More on that 
later. Um, this film, this film, it really does help. It, what it does, it buys the DCEU time. This film needed to be popular. This film needed to work. This film needed to be successful after Justice League. The DCEU and Warner Brothers could not handle another, another you know, divisive film. And this film certainly is. And as I say, it, it, go, it, it kind of balances on that tightrope of being a really great mainstream movie with some very, very interesting pieces of commentary, of course. Um, and I think there's a great scene as well where... Um, Mira doesn't really respect the human race. Oh, they chuck their rubbish in our ocean for us, you know, and we're, we're swimming in it. And, and, then, and then Arthur says to her, yeah, but there's some great things about this planet. And it's great because she's talking about her point of view of the surface world, and he's talking about his point of view. Um, and I think that's really, really an interesting moment, and that's all in the writing. Um, you see, this is this is the thing with that Roshka from Collider saying, um, I wanted to like this film, but I didn't. Uh, all you can do is blame the director and the writers. When you blame the director, blame the director. The director has um, directed a beautiful film, Roshka, or whatever your bloody name is. This is a brilliant film. Nobody's saying anything about James Wan, but some great things. And you're saying you've got to blame the director. Well, blame him for what? Blame him for giving us an amazing visual masterclass? Uh, I don't think so. 60-70% of a CBM is about what it looks like visually. It should be visually stunning because you're showing a world that, you know, mostly years ago we could only read between the pages of a comic and use our imaginations. And our imaginations are very vivid. If you're a comic book fan, you should know that. If you're a fan of fiction, you should know that. So you should have a great story. You should have great performances. But it's all there. Arthur Curry, a.k.a. Aquaman, is on a journey in this film. He starts off not believing in himself. He starts off resisting what he is. He's helping. The incident on the submarine is proof that he's going out there. And, I mean, that moment just behind me, is it's very similar uh, with Henry Cavill and Man of Steel, that moment, isn't it? There's a sequence in Man of Steel, very... Very, very similar. Um, so, yes. Um, and I think there's there's definitely, um, this is very linked in places to the Snyderverse, but not blatantly. You have to be really looking to notice it. But for me, for me, it's one of my favourite comic book movies I've ever seen. It really is good. And as I say, by the end of it, you just want more. And um, it was just so, so good. It's so good. I mean, you know, people say that this is just a ripoff of Black Panther. First of all, Aquaman was created before Black Panther. And this is nothing, nothing like Black Panther. This is a very, very different film. And um, the dynamics are different. Um, and they should be. Look, Black Panther is a very, very capable film. I still don't think it deserves Oscars and awards. But it's a good CBM. And so is this in its own right. I think this is a better CBM for, for a lot of reasons. I think this film breaks ground. Not that a film always has to break ground, but I just, you know, I just feel that this, this film is a pure spectacle, a pure masterpiece. And really, the performances that James Wan gets out of his actors is something truly special. But when you've got um, people like William Dafoe and Nicole Kidman, one of the things that disappointed me it's not a big, big deal. I think Nicole Kidman and William Dafoe needed to spend more time together, you know, because these are the two, you know, these are the, if they were chefs, they would be Michelin star chefs. And that's what they are in terms of acting and their rep and everything. So I hope in the sequel, we get Voco and Queen Atlanta in lots of scenes together and maybe a little dynamic there that might cause problems between her and her Earth husband or, you know, Arthur's father, basically. So that would be interesting as well. But if you've got William Dafoe, you use him as much as you can. I think he was used well in this film. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of him. And um, they, I would have preferred if they used his mental role um, to Arthur a little bit more. But the back flashes were good, and it really worked. And at that moment when Arthur uses the whole, what Voco teaches him when he's a boy, and you can see the expression of pride on Voco's face. I thought William Dafoe did that so well, but William Dafoe has great quality. Also, how they made the actors look younger in, in, in the previous times was brilliant too. Oh, by the way, Dolph Lundgren. 
was actually surprisingly really good in this film. Again, he was sparingly used, but when he was used, he, he, he delivered a really, really solid performance. So I really liked what we got from Dolph Lundgren, but I really liked what we got from the whole cast, to be honest. This really is a marvel in the sense, no pun intended, that the acting is as good as the uh, beautiful uh, computer-generated effects. And people talk about the CGI and just kind of compliment James Wan. I work in this industry. It takes so many people to create such a beautiful, beautiful sensory film. You know, it's not just the director. Yes, the director makes final decisions on how it looks, where it goes. Yes, absolutely. But some very hard-working, intelligent, clever, you know, talented people have worked with James. And I think instead of just saying, oh, James Wan, oh, James Wan, I think we should always remember that making a film is a comprehensive effort. It's, it's about a group of people coming together and doing some wonderful work. Making a film or a TV show or anything live action or even animated is hard work and it takes ages to put together. And this film, I don't know how they've done it because as I say, I mean Atlantis, Atlantis is as stunning as Krypton is on Man of Steel. In fact, Atlantis may be even more stunning. Um, the work they've done on that planet, because of course, Atlantis is a big part of the film. And Atlantis will be a big part of the worlds of DC going forward. Atlantis, in the history of DC Comics and the stories that they're telling, will always pay, play a big part. So it was important to display this. And as I say, this is Star Wars underwater. There's so many different factions, there's so many different elements to Atlantis, and they've only just hit the... The, the low notes of it. There's still so many things to discover about Atlantis in films, in other DC movies, and I'm really excited for the future. And of course, James Wan has to do the sequels, but I also want James Wan, I mean, James Wan for me is my top pick for the next Justice League film. The next Justice League film has to be done the right way. We're not going to get one in a hurry, obviously, because what they're doing now they're cementing, they're developing, basically, they're developing the foundations of the worlds of DC. So what you're going to get is, you're going to get a lot of smaller films, like Plastic Man, like Blue Beetle, just to cement the whole kind of foundations of the worlds of DC. Then I think we will get Superman again. We're getting Batman in a couple of years as well. Um, and, and so you're going to have to be patient for now. It's going to have to be baby steps because once they do what they want to do, I think DC Films will be in a very healthy position and I think it will be in a more healthy position than the MCU. In closing, I think there's another piece of commentary here between Queen Atlanta and um, actually Aquaman's father because this is a kind of two different cultures who don't particularly like each other. Well, uh, the humans don't know about the Atlanteans, but the Atlanteans despise the surface world, right? So what Atlanta does by having a relationship with this guy is um, she breaks every rule in the book and she's actually sentenced to die, but she survives where she's, where she's taken. Um, I knew she was still alive throughout the film. That was one of the most predictable things, but I didn't mind that. We knew. This is Nicole Kidman. She's not going to be dead. I don't know if the character's dead in the comics, but I'm glad she survived anyway. I want to see more Nicole Kidman. Um, definitely, and definitely more Orm. And I want to see that re she really did display her love for Orm in that moment when she sees him for the first time. I thought that was a brilliant piece of acting by Patrick and Nicole, really good. But yeah, so in closing, um, this is a wonderful film. If you go to the cinema to see this, you will not come out disappointed. You will see one of the most stunning, if not the stunning pieces of spectacle in film history. You will see a beautiful adventure. You will see the, 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 the main character, Aquaman, a.k.a. Arthur Curry, go through a fantastic journey. A journey that begins with self-doubt and then he, become, he embraces his destiny and becomes Aquaman. It is one of the best origin films I've ever seen. Um, it's very entertaining. Uh, you'll love the characters. You'll remember it. As I say, this is everything. In fact, I haven't said yet, but let me just put it this way. This is Star Wars, A New Hope. This is, Arthur Curry is the new hope 
for the DC Universe. He's Arthur Curry is coming in as Jason Momoa. He's, I'm Aquaman, I don't give a crap, I want to be a brilliant, brilliant, you know. There's no, he's not, con, he's not a self-conscious um, character, if you like, and that's what Momoa is as well. Look, Momoa, Momoa and his Aquaman are, I am what I am. Take me or leave me. I'm not suave, I'm not debonair. I have got a big heart. I do care about people, but I'm not going to mind my P's and Q's. I can be a bit rude sometimes, but my heart is in the right place. And this is the quality of Jason Momoa. And this is why it's a fantastic movie. And Zack Snyder's promise to those radio hosts who said that Aquaman would be impossible to be taken seriously. And Zack Snyder says, by the time you finish watching that film, you won't be laughing anymore. Guess what? Nobody's laughing at Aquaman's box office. Nobody's laughing at James Wan. Nobody's laughing at Jason Momoa or Amber Heard or Nicole Kidman. This is a fabulous 10 out of 10 film. And at last, as DC fans, we can stick our head out and be proud. You have been watching the Aquaman spoiler review by me, Big Mouth. And there's going to be many more videos from me coming up today and in the future. Unless I die, and I really don't want to die.